Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, it's great to see so many faces, some of them familiar. Uh, I already got introduced, so I don't want to repeat that. I'll start very quickly with uh, this, explaining what problem I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about. Uh, so, uh, Airflow is a beast. Airflow has more more than eighty uh, Python packages in in PyPy. It consists of the Airflow core and eighty uh, uh, providers, and that means that we together, Airflow and providers, has uh, recently I was talking six hundred fifty, but uh, since then. We have 70, so last time I gave this talk, it was 650, it was two months ago. So we grew by 50 dependencies uh, in the in the course of month. So we have lots and lots of dependencies, and this causes a lot of problems, because when you are trying to install problematic packages, and uh, the notorious one is the DBT, uh, which uh, especially you recently had uh, lots of adequate uh, dependencies, they quite often don't agree well with uh, with Airflow. You got this kind of messages, this kind of errors. You have like lots and lots of uh, conflicts, and you have no idea what to do about this. Especially that it doesn't give you uh, a lot of clues. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, try to explain how to deal with that problem. It's I, I don't have a silver bullet, but I'll tell what's the the what's the tooling we are using and how we can approach uh, solving dependency problems uh, uh, in the way that uh, leads to least path, path of resistance, so to speak, so that you can uh, use the best practices. And also this is because uh, some of the things that we've implemented in Airflow are misunderstood and I want to dispel some of the myths, especially around escape. So what's the tooling? So you can, you know, like, Managing dependencies in uh, in Python is uh, can be done in many many ways. You know all the different kind of tools uh, that you can use, uh, and I'm not going to talk about that because uh, in Airflow we only use one, the pip, and if you use anything else, uh, just use <laughs> just just you know like it's uh, you've been warned, let's say because pip uh, has some. Sure. Especially the constraint problems allows you to uh, attack the dependency problem a little bit better than other tools. And uh, the problem that other tools solve, like poetry, pip and uh, and a few others, can be solved really, really simply with pip. I will so so show you how. First of all, like why do we have a problem in the first place? Uh, not only because we have a lot of dependencies, but because the uh, duality of Airflow. Airflow is both application and library. Uh, why it is an application? Because you want to install and use Airflow. You want to run the UI. Uh, it means that you want to be able to reproducibly uh, install Airflow. So you want, uh, today you want to install a version of Airflow, like 2.7, for example. Uh, and you want to be able to, or 2.6.1, with some providers, with some dependencies, with some of the extensions of Airflow. You want to have it work uh and you want to have it work in a month in a year as long as you're using that because you'll be reproducing the environment or building the environment maybe adding new stuff on top of it so you want to make sure that uh, when you install it today it will install and when you install it in two years it will install as well uh, and i have one date to remember this, this is the moment where we introduce straight so you february 7 2020 that was a date to remember. Why? Because we released Airflow 1.10.8. That's prehistory for most of the people. Yeah. But this date is to remember because the same day we released 1.10.9. Uh, it's the same day, not like a few weeks later. Why? Because an hour after we released Airflow, somebody released a uh, verb take. That's a uh, name to remember as well. That's uh, one of our dependencies. Uh, and it broke Airflow installation. So we just released new Airflow and people tried to install it, just couldn't install it because there, there was a new dependency. Okay. So we released the so Verxic was released and broke our installation. And that is in, uh, unacceptable mostly because you have no control over that. You really you want your software to be used by your user, but somebody else releases a dependency of yours that completely breaks the default installation. So uh, so that's so we want to keep 
this just coming back. So, so we want to be able to, to get this, the pip install version of Airflow will install today and tomorrow, but also Airflow is a library. So one solution to the problem of being able to install it today and tomorrow, and that's what most library, most application do, one solution is uh, to pin all the requirements to say, okay, I want to install the application and I have, I want to have all these hundred dependencies in this particular version. So when I install a year from now, it will install correctly. And that's a good solution. But Airflow is also a library because you want to write tags and you want to use some dependencies there. And probably you want to use those dependencies in different versions. You want to upgrade and downgrade. Uh, you want to use Pydantic 2 or Pydantic 1, uh, an issue that I commented on this morning when I wake up, woke up, for example. Uh, and uh, pinning requirements will not allow you to upgrade those dependencies independently. Because when you pin requirements, if you try to upgrade and you will get confused, you will not be able to upgrade. So you can't have take and eat it too. You would like to have reproducible installs uh, that will work forever, but also you don't want to pin requirements because you want to upgrade things. Okay, now meet constraints. This is our Airflow constraints. You too is familiar with the requirements, the .txt file uh, and uh, Python file. There's a lot of people I see. So constraints look like requirements file. They are not. I mean, you can use them as requirements file if you want, but you should use them as constraints. Uh, what they do, they tell you, okay, if you install this application in this version and uh, you use this constraint, if that particular dependence is installed, it will be installed in the version specified here. It doesn't mean that it will be installed. It tells that it will be installed in this version, but also it means that next time when you run pip, this is not fixed. This is only working at the time of the, the first installation. So it only allows you to actually do what, yeah. So it allows you to do what the, 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 the higher bubble shows. So you can say, I want to install Airflow in this version with these providers using those constraints, but it doesn't block you later from upgrading it. So this is the trick. This is basically the trick that we use to end that with constraints. So constraints are not requirements. They are only supported by PIP. I'm commenting and discussing in a few PRs or a few issues in other tools to also implement constraints, but that that's met with some resistance. Um, uh, yeah, not they don't see the, the the need. And quite frankly, yes, because it's a very specific requirement of big installation, big big software like Airflow. So they actually allow you to have cake and eats too. So we can install Airflow with those requirements, with those the dependencies that you want in the specific version, two years, ten years in the future. But it doesn't block you from upgrading. So it pro provides reproducible installation and ability to upgrade uh, or, or downgrade different dependencies. How reproducible installation look like? You see, it, you can see find it in our documentation. You just specify constraint file when you install Airflow. That's about it. The, they are hosted in our GitHub, but they don't have to be. That's something that I'll come back later to. Uh, you have separate constraints for different Airflow versions item version because they differ depending on, on, on the versions. Uh, and from time to time, we even update it when we have uh, something that breaks setup tools. Uh, we had a few, like two or three cases where Airflow stopped working, installation stopped working, uh, even with constraints because uh, not the dependencies failed, but the, uh, the tooling of PIP was upgraded, uh, updated. But then we have the mechanism to update those constraints after the fact and fix the problems, which we did, which means that all versions of Airflow can still be installed today in the same version, the same dependencies as they were several years ago. It's cool. Curious cases, how you're installing Airflow uh, from the scratch. So this is the basic use case, primary use case for constraints. You just install Airflow, you specify the, the providers, specify a version of Airflow constraint, uh, the, the version of the file specification where you download it, and that's it. Uh, this provides a reprodu reproducible installation of Airflow and providers that you specify as extras. 
Uh, and it's very suitable, for example, for a CI pipeline when you want to build your image or you want to uh, build your environment ready to be um, rebuilt every time you do, uh, uh, or do a build. Uh, and the trick is, and that, this is the first problem that people have, uh, if they want to install their own dependencies, don't do it. I mean, this is, this is wrong. Like, this is wrong because if your dependencies have a different version, uh, they will be limited to the, to the constraints. Sometimes they will be conflicting. So if you want to install something else extra on top of the Airflow and providers that come from it, like the, the, the set of Airflow plus providers which were, in, were tested at the moment uh, we released Airflow, if you want to do something else, don't do it here. This is, this is one of the problems people have and they complain, okay, uh, in your constraint, there is Pydantic 1 and I want uh, Pydantic 2. I want to have Pydantic 1. It doesn't work. Can we change it? I mean, no, because Pydantic 2 is in constraints, so you cannot install it the same, the same time because they will talk. But the thing is that when you install other dependencies, you can just do it as the next step. Yeah. So in this case, okay, you would love to have a single installation step where you install everything. But it doesn't allow that if you want to use constraint. If you want to use another set of dependencies, you just install it as a separate step. And uh, uh, the separate step doesn't use constraints simply for the reason that we just don't want to use those versions. We just want to upgrade or downgrade. So using constraint makes no sense in this context. So this means that some of the dependencies might be upgraded and downgraded, and you might be afraid of that. Because say okay, airflow is not work, maybe not working with those versions. Generally, it should. So it's not hundred percent guaranteed, of course, but airflow has its own requirements that limit the set of dependencies that can be used. For example, we say okay, we want uh, db no dbt, but we want uh, bottle core uh, greater than one point three, uh, and this means that we have a whole range of versions that match. It doesn't have to be 1.3.7778 or whatever is the current version. It can be different. And if some other dependency requires that bottle core, it will be automatically downgraded or upgraded as needed. And there is a very, very good chance it will work. If it won't, then probably you have to do something more because probably your de dependency you want to install is just incom incompatible with Airflow in this case. And maybe you that need, need, to, need to use different version. So, so this is, uh, uh, and, and there is one trick I wanted, to, or trick, one uh, recommendation I have for Ed, anyone doing this in a separate step, just use Apache Airflow equals equals the version that you already have. Because the problem is, if you're using PIP or using different dependency, which will be incompatible with Airflow, for whatever reason, it will downgrade or upgrade Air Airflow for you. Uh, that might be surprising for people, but it will. Just do that because our Airflow is just another dependency. If people will find out that what you want to install conflicts with the version you have, it will just downgrade it or upgrade it to match it. And then you can suddenly end up with version 2.7 of Airflow, which happens to our users quite often if they don't use that. What When you use this, whenever you want to install new dependency and specify Apache Airflow you want to install it, if there is a conflict, you will get a conflict information. So you'll get either technology stuff because we have the conflict. Much better than silently operating there, especially in CI. So keep your airflow version and don't use constraints when you want to install another dependence. Providers. So we are telling, and I was talking today at the panel as well, that uh, this is a great and used features feature by, by our users that they can downgrade and upgrade providers independently or from airflow. If we release airflow 2.71, and Google Provider is 10.73 for that version. This is just a kind of golden set, golden set of dependencies, golden version that we tested finally when we released the Airflow and Provider was released at the same time. This was the latest version, so we put it into constraints. But there is no problem to use lower or higher version when uh, the provider is released, when new provider version is released. And you can upgrade and downgrade the providers, but in this case, you might have guessed, no, don't use the, don't use the uh, constraints because Google Provider is actually kept in constraints in the version that was the golden version. 
people. Don't use constraints when you upgrade or down, downgrade, downgrade constraints. But uh, again, keep the upper shear flow equals equals uh, 2.6.3 because you want to not to have not to have an accidental upgrade or down, downgrade of her. So how do you upgrade if you want to keep the whole installation? Right. So we want first one provider some specific version. So we want 2.7. Previously I showed you 2.6.3. Now you want to upgrade the whole installation. You don't have any special uh, dependencies or you have them installed before. How do you do that? If you upgrade the whole installation, you have to use the same uh, you can you can do use the constraint version and then what happens it will upgrade Airflow and providers that you specify as extras it will upgrade them to the golden set of versions that were available or that were released when, when we released, released Airflow and you can use that. And for, after that, you can still, uh, if, you, if you upgrade Airflow this way, you can still reinstall the dependency that you want to install extra on top of it. Again, to find out like what needs to be downgraded and upgraded. That might cause that for some time between those two operations, with install, which is upgrade in this case, you, uh, uh, between the, the, first, the first command and the second one, uh, the, the dependencies might get out of sync a little bit. But after you install, dbt 1.0 in this case, dbt as, a, as an example, uh, and and keep the new airflow that you just installed, pip will resolve the dependencies and will that just clean up the environment for you. This is this is actually quite quite cool. Uh, custom Docker image. Uh, how do you do that in a, in your custom image? Because often people use airflow via the custom image they have and they they, they update the image. Uh, uh, and add whatever dependencies they want. This is an example of how you can do that in using the slim image. So we have a slim image uh, example. Slim image doesn't have any providers besides the two pre-installed ones. Then you can again run pip install a shareful and that add the extras and providers you want with the same constraints that uh, uh, that refer to the, the version of airflow that you are using. This way you can add only providers that you want. This makes the image much smaller rather than using the, the default image that we have with all providers. And then you can, for example, have your own requirements file. Copy it to the image, run it in stuff again with Apache Airflow equals equals to the version that we have in the image. And we have this nice environment variable that, that you can use to make this Docker file independent on the version to just one place where you change it. And it's just for requirements and copy it up. Yeah. And then the useful thing at the end, there is this very nice command pip check at the end. Uh, and this command just tells you if the set of dependencies that you came up with is consistent. Okay. Again, no constraints in the, in the last step. However, what you can do, and this is something that I mentioned before, probably you want to build your own uh, set of dependencies that you uh, want to reproducibly install not only in your CI, but also like, for example, let your developer install it. Yeah. Let your let it be used in your development environment. And using Airflow constraints in this case is problematic because you have to do these two steps, and you have to uh, you have to manage like C resolve the, the conflict of dash. So what what do you do? You can use your own constraints. You don't have to limit yourself to the Airflow constraints that we have. But you have just reuse what we've done. And use the same principle, but just have your own constraint files, uh, which will have our flow, last providers, last dependencies you need. Uh, you can then run pip check to see if everything works. And how to do, huh? Like be too fast. So how to do your, <laughs> how to make your own constraints is very easy. You just do that. You just have a Docker image or install your own virtual environment where you install Airflow, then you install dependencies. Let the pip resolve uh, all the problems. Run tip check and run this call. It's as simple as it is. There is no more. You just pip freeze. I use sort to make it just sort it automatically just to uh, have it nice. And then you can host it somewhere. Like you can put it in your GitHub or you can put it in your uh, uh, GCS or 
Cloud or S3 or whatever, use it from there. And this way, now when you're installing anything, you know that it works together with all the dependencies you have. So what you do is like pip install, you specify the dependencies you are Apache Airflow, uh, extras, all the dependencies you have, minus minus constraint, my own constraint file, off you go. And that's your own constraint file that you can use that describes your environment. And uh, this is super easy. You just have to create. And people sometimes modify the constraint file, add the things manually there. I do that sometimes. Uh, and I know one, what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm like, it's dangerous yeah. because you can very easily conflict with something else without real this. But doing this, just let the people do the, the, the job. People install everything in your environment, and then you just run it freeze. And you go, you have to think about it. So when all else for fails, because this is not a full solution. There, there will be cases where you will have strange uh, dependencies that will not be able to install it or whatever. Uh, or maybe you have limitations on like version or version of your dependence. But what you can do? So you can use different Python uh, interpreters uh, because basically the problem with dependencies is like, okay, we want we have the problem with conflicting dependencies because we want to run them all in, in the same Python interface. And there are a few ways how you can uh, run different interpreters. Python virtual operator is one thing. Uh, and this virtual environment that is created on the slide. And, uh, do I see yes here? Oh, no, no, no. I, I spoke about this like uh, maybe so you have a cache implemented for that and um, much more efficient. You have external Python operator, which means that in your Docker image, or environment, you can prefer uh, another virtual environment and use that one when you, you use Python operator, uh, and it can be pre-installed. Or you can use Docker Kubernetes operator. Uh, so conflicts often are not only on the on the Python dependencies, but also system dependencies. So in order to separate them, isolate, you can use Docker Kubernetes operator. But there are some limitations. You cannot pass Python objects into them. Uh, you might uh, be able to use Airflow uh, public inter interface if you want to interface it with Airflow. So like you know, exchanging X comments, et cetera. It's, it's, it's a bit, little bit more complex from it, but it provides night isolation. So those are all the options uh, uh, questions. Um, any support for poetry? No. <laughs> Not that big. <laughs> no, no, poetry is one of those uh, you can you can look it up. There is a PR about adding constraints to poetry. I'm very active in this PR, and I'm asking someone to like uh, people tried and so far didn't implement it yet. So I, I recommend not to use poetry uh, for Airflow uh, base installation. Uh, it's it doesn't add, doesn't really add value for 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 Airflow, and uh, constraints are, are not supported. So so it's uh, some of the. There are some problems uh, which cannot be bypassed. Eric, it's Victor Chipaito. Um, uh, we Kubernetes is something that is core to Airflow. Kubernetes, the uh, Kubernetes is currently pinned. The client is currently pinned to one point two three, I think, or to some two three something, I think. And everyone has their own like version of Kubernetes running. Mm -hmm. um, how do you? How would you think of tackling that? Like we're on we're on twenty uh, twenty seven right now on Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. um, how can we float that a little more, as opposed to keeping it pinned there? So, uh, as explained before, like constraints are not uh, fixed, so you can upgrade to the newer version of Kubernetes client. There's no problem. Just add it as a second pip install Kubernetes client Kubernetes equals equals whatever you need. And most likely it will just work uh, because we don't, uh, I don't think we pin it to specific version. Now we, we do have some limits, but also Kubernetes client has this property that uh, it will work. Even the old client will work with the new uh, Kubernetes. So it's not, not as big of an issue, uh, only if you want to use some new features uh, that were not available back then, but I don't, if, if we do pin, then we should reconsider that. So maybe, you know, like oh, open a PR and, or an issue on that. I'm happy to, after I return from my two weeks holidays, which I'm going to have after the Airflow Summit, I'm going to look at that. <laughs> so if I install the Airflow with a slim image, do I need to install the specific version of the provider? 
No, no, you can you can install any provider version as well. So the uh, the example which I shown uh, uh, it was it was it was really showing the how you can install the uh, the version of providers that were there. Uh, here it is. So uh, this this command right now with constraints, it will install the version of providers that were a kind of golden set of uh, dependencies and providers in this version. But you can freely, in the next step, install a new version or not install in the first step, but installing in the second step and specify which version of provider you want to install. This is no problem as long as there is no other conflicting dependencies because it might be that you know, it's a super complex problem in general. Uh, so there might be like a provider from like two years ago might not be able to be installed with Airflow, uh, like recent Airflow version. But generally, uh, the idea is that uh, you can go back quite a number of versions in, in, in history and they should install, no problem. And uh, future ones as well. And one last question. What is the size difference between the slim image and the full image? Uh, about uh, 400 megs, I think, uncompressed. So it's like uh, 800 to 400 or something like that. It's it's big. It's huge. Like the difference, the difference is very very, very significant. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Stop. Yeah.